Welcome artists! In this video we are going to learn how to create a beautiful and unique geode using color theory and learning about geology and these magnificent little rocks which contain a surprise inside. What is a geode? Geodes are spherical rocks that contain hollow cavities lined with crystals. The name geode is a word derived in Greek meaning earth-like. Geodes are absolutely irresistible. They fill display cases and museums everywhere. It's hard to deny the allure of a rock that is rugged and weathered on the outside, yet so sparkly, stunning, and colorful on the inside. So where do geodes actually come from? It turns out that what looks like a solid entity on the outside begins with an absence of material on the inside. Geodes begin as bubbles in volcanic rock or as animal burrows, tree roots, or mud balls in sedimentary rock. Over time, the outer shell of the spherical shape hardens and water containing silica precipitation forms on the inside walls of the hollow cavity within the geode. That precipitation can contain a variety of dissolved minerals, including quartz, amethyst, and calcite. Now let's take a look at these beautiful agate slices. These are small geodes that are often sliced and polished showing off that they are beautiful, remarkable colors and crystals inside. Where can you find geodes? Well, they're found throughout the world, but most concentrated in areas of volcanic ash beds, deserts, or regions containing limestone. To create our geodes today, we're going to learn about color theory, in particular, analogous colors. Those are three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Think of them as neighbors living right next door to one another on the color wheel. Here are some common examples of analogous color schemes to help you out when creating your geode. For example, red, red, orange, and orange. Remember, they are three colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. To begin, you can place your paper landscape or portrait style. And we're going to draw with a Sharpie a organic spherical shape with some rugged rough edges. Again, this is an organic shape so it doesn't have to be perfect and each one should look a little bit different. Once I have my outer line drawn in, I'm just going to thicken it up with my Sharpie. Next, grab your analogous color scheme. I'm going to use a combination of violets or purples with red, violet, and purple and red. You're going to just trace the outer line with your markers. Now you can make them as thick or as thin as you want. If you don't have markers, feel free to do this same process with watercolor paints. Now to give my geode a little visual interest, I'm going to add a few different colors using different values of purple or violet. I'm going to make sure that I leave a little white space in between the colors that I choose. So again, you're just tracing those inner lines around and around, making it as thick or as thin as you want. I like to make sure I do a couple layers just so that when I add the water, it creates a nice paint-like effect and has enough pigment to pick up. Continuing the same method I began with, I'm just going to continue tracing with my next color. Now that I've reached the center of my geode, I'm going to grab my Sharpie and once again draw sort of an organic spherical-like shape inside of my geode. Mm -hmm. 
Now lastly, I'm going to grab my red marker and begin to color in the middle or center of the geode. I'm going to do red and then in the very middle, just add a little bit more of the pink that I just used, just to give it a little bit of contrast. Now grab a cup of water and a paintbrush as well as some salt. I like to use a combination of both table salt and sea salt. Let's get that paintbrush nice and wet, creating this beautiful watercolor-like effect by getting the marker wet with the water. Work on the outside edges first, going around your geode and then sprinkle some salt on top of that wet watercolor. Continue doing this all around the geode as you work towards the center. Now, while you're doing that, let's talk a little bit about what's physically happening when you drop a piece of salt into a pool of watercolor pigment. Each granulation of salt acts as a tiny sponge, pulling the water and whatever pigment is with it toward the salt grain. The second it touches the surface, it begins to work. How it works will depend on a few factors, including the size and shape of the salt grain, as well as the pigment, how much pigment you use, and even the type of watercolor paper you use. This salt techniques create these beautiful crystallized patterns inside of your geode, making it look more realistic. Next, it's time to let it dry. You might leave it overnight or for a few hours. Once your beautiful geode is completely dry, you're going to then gently rub off all of that excess salt. Now go ahead and you can grab a metallic marker. I like the Crayola brand, also a metallic Sharpie, and begin tracing the outer edge. You can continue this anywhere else inside the geode that you like. Grab your Elmer's glue and some glitter. I like to just gently and lightly draw with the tip of my glue wherever I want to add my glitter, sort of adding those beautiful sparkly crystals inside the geode, just like the ones we saw at the beginning of the video. Now it's time for my favorite part, the glitter. Go ahead and begin shaking it all over where you applied the glue. Then grab a paper plate, shake it off. That way it sort of contains the excess mess. And voila, you have a beautiful one of a kind geode created by you. I love this process and the results so much. I wanted to try one more in another color scheme. I hope you had as much fun as I did creating these beautiful geodes. Well done, my most amazing artist. Stay inspired and never stop creating. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks so much. Until next time.